Uh, thank you all for coming. I'd like to welcome you to Reading and quickly outline our speaking program. First, we'll have U.S. EPA Regional Administrator Dennis Zeal, followed by Mass DEP Commissioner uh, Martin Super, Mass State Treasurer Deb Goldberg, Executive Director of the MWRA Fred Lasky, and finally my colleague, Superintendent John Dory, for some closing remarks. Um, in order to be an efficient and effective small community, we in Reading believe that one thing we must do is gather on a regular basis all departments for normal things. And that way when an emergency happens, we know each other, we can, we can react. Um, we were just reminiscing, and it was late on a Friday night when we first heard some testing results of, of lead in some of our school water. And we met uh, that night in the facilities department. Uh, we didn't need to waste any time introducing ourselves to each other. We didn't worry about who was going to step on whose toes. Within five seconds, we started to figure out how to solve the problem, and we find that's the key. Um, and we didn't leave until very late at night, until we felt like we had a good plan to move forward. Um, another aspect of that efficiency is using our community partners. And on this issue, certainly a special thank you to Fred Lasky, Executive Director and staff of the MWRA. Uh, they've been a great partner in every aspect of water. Um, <clears throat> October, if you don't know, is Children's Health Month. And so, as a parent, I'm especially happy that the EPA has recently taken a very similar approach with a focus on communication and partnerships, as one of their MOUs recently indicated. So I'm very honored to introduce our first speaker, Dennis Bazile, the U.S. EPA Regional Administrator. Dennis. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Town Manager Legashore, for the kind introduction and for welcoming us to Reading Memorial High School for today's event. We are grateful to be here to highlight these important issues today. I also have a list of people I'd like to thank for being here, uh, especially from Reading, for taking the time to welcome us and for the hard work you do every day to ensure safe and healthy schools for Reading children. Uh, Mike Corellis, thank you. Uh, school Superintendent Dr. John Doherty, thank you for being here. Uh, Facilities Director Joe Huggins. Water Quality and DPW Safety Coordinator Eric Misilovy. Thank you, of course, to Marty Suberg for being here and for your leadership at Mass DEP. You and your team are leading the country in your broad assistance to public water supply systems, schools, and, and child care programs to find and address lead and drinking water. Thank you. I'm also glad to be joined today by Massachusetts Treasurer Deborah Goldman. She and her Gold, Goldberg, sorry about that. She and her team do an admiral job managing the Massachusetts Clean Water Trust, which is a crucial mechanism to fund needed water infrastructure projects here in the Commonwealth. We can't forget Ted Lask, uh, um, Fred Lasky. I'll get the names right eventually here, uh, of the MWRA. One of the reasons Massachusetts enjoys cleaner water and a healthier environment. I've been EPA Regional Administrator for about a month now, and I think everyone in the region knows Fred and respects the work that they do with him. I also know that Nolan O'Brien is here from Senator Markey's office. Thank you for being here. I want to acknowledge the support EPA enjoys for Massachusetts uh, Congressional Delegation. I'm not, I'm not sure if anyone is here. Uh, the Senators and House members routinely support EPA's efforts to protect children from lead and other hazardous materials. We appreciate the support we receive to protect human health and the environment here in New England. Also, I want to do a shout out and publicly point out EPA New England's experts on healthy drinking water, Jane Downing. Thank you for your work. Denise Springborg, running our drinking water program, and a special shout out to Ellie Wong of our staff. Ellie worked really hard to ensure that Massachusetts would get the funding I am announcing today, so thank you, Ellie. As I've already said, it's a real pleasure to be here today at Reading Memorial High School. We're here to discuss significant EPA actions that will help protect people in Massachusetts, especially our children, from being exposed to lead and drinking water. It is appropriate that we're discussing this today because, as was mentioned, today is, or October is Children's Health Month. Children are especially vulnerable to exposure to lead. EPA is firmly committed to taking actions to address kids from lead exposure. 
First, I'd like to applaud the fact that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is doing so much to protect kids from lead exposure. Thanks to the leadership of Governor Charlie Baker, we've got Martin Soberg, Soberg's team at MassDEP, and the statewide financial team led by Treasurer Goldberg doing innovative work and in making large investments in drinking water testing and remediation efforts for schools and child care programs to protect children from lead and drinking water. We've got a couple announcements today. First, we are very pleased today to announce an EPA grant supporting testing of drinking water in Massachusetts schools and child care programs to ensure that kids are not being exposed to lead in the water they consume. I'm announcing today that EPA is awarding $967,000 to the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection. These funds... <laughs> The funds were authorized under a section of the National Infrastructure Improvement Act, the WIND Act, that is intended to reduce children's exposure to elevated lead in drinking water. At the end of today's ceremony, I'd like to invite Marty to join me for a photograph as we present the check. This grant will continue to expand the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Assistance Program for Lead in School of Drinking Water, a nationally recognized program that has already helped almost 1,000 public schools and child care programs that take proactive steps to find and get the lead out of drinking water. MassDEP, in collaboration with UMass Amherst and other partners, will use the funds to communicate, train, test, and take action in schools in high-risk communities throughout the Congo. On behalf of the health of our children, we applaud the protective efforts already underway and we appreciate the opportunity to support future efforts to come. On the second announcement, uh, lead and copper rule. While the grant is a big deal and a lot of money and a, a ginormous check, it's not the only thing we are here to announce today. Right now, EPA Administrator Andrew Wheeler is in Green Bay, Wisconsin, announcing that EPA is proposing important improvements to the lead and copper rule the proposed updates will better protect our children's health. The proposed updates to the rule will ensure water quality utilities act sooner to protect the most at-risk communities and households first. For communities and states grappling with the cost and complexity of replacing their lead service lines, we are helping to connect communities with available federal programs that help finance or fund service lines, service line replacements, and other actions. Because addressing lead, is this working? It's working. Because addressing lead in our drinking water is complex and challenging, we consulted with our state, local, and tribal partners, and with science and public health experts to review the best available peer-reviewed science. Our approach focuses on six improvements in six key areas. One, identifying the most impacted areas. Two, strengthening drinking water treatment. Three, replacing lead service lines, four, increasing drinking water sampling reliability, five, improving risk communication to customers, and six, better protecting children when they learn and play. In the proposed rule, we would keep the existing lead action level of 15 parts per billion while requiring more and quicker responses to detections at that level. EPA is proposing for the first time a new lead trigger level of 10 parts per billion, a flexible provision designed to compel water systems to plan for and implement treatment and support lead pipe replacement programs. Systems above 10 parts per billion are new trigger level, but below the action level of 15 parts per billion would be required to work with their state to set and achieve an annual goal for replacing lead service lines. Water systems above 15 parts per billion would be required to fully replace a minimum of 3% of the number of lead service lines annually. There are other important proposed changes which will require water utilities to inventory their lead pipes and share locations with the public, provide an expedited notification of elevated lead results to the public within 24 hours, find and fix places where lead and tap water is elevated, and periodically sample schools and childcare facilities 
within their service area. There's obviously a lot more in the proposed rule, but in the interest of time, I'll wrap up my remarks now. We believe we can better protect children's health and protect communities that are most at risk by increasing information we have on lead levels and sources of lead, establishing a new lead trigger level to spur water systems to take earlier action, finding and fixing sources of high lead levels, and conducting testing at schools and childcare facilities. We look forward to hearing feedback on the proposed rule over the coming months. EPA will keep working with our federal, state, tribal, and utility partners to protect public health and finalize this important rule. Meanwhile, like what's happening here in Reading, we look to communities to continue to take proactive steps to like conducting lead pipe inventories, supporting lead pipe replacement programs for homeowners, working with schools, and sharing all information with the public. This is necessary because until we get the lead out of our pipes and fixtures, there will always be risks to our children. Again, I, since, I extend my sincere gratitude for our partners in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and right here in Reading. Your welcome to us today is a fantastic thank you. We look forward to working together to keep protecting kids from lead exposure. Now I will hand over things back to the town manager. Thanks again for inviting the EPA to come to your community today on short notice to celebrate these achievements for cleaner water and children's health. Thank you, Dennis. I'd be remiss without recognizing and thanking Senator Lewis uh, for attending also. And I also want to thank Principal Kate Boynton for letting us be here today. Um, next, I'm very pleased to uh, introduce Massachusetts State Treasurer, Deb Goldberg. You threw us a little. Um, first of all, I'm absolutely delighted to be here today and extraordinarily impressed with the reaction and the response that Reading took to the challenge around lead in their water. Uh, having come from the local level, I totally get what it's like to be in those rooms and work together to try to find a solution very quickly. And certainly, Reading has hit it out of the park. Um, I won't repeat all the thank yous that, the, that you so extraordinarily took care of, um, but let's suffice by saying EPA, DEP, Town of Reading, everyone who's here in the room, thank you and thank you for my team that is busy actually working on a bond deal to have more money for the Clean Water Trust, which is exactly what we want them to be doing. Uh, when we on the board of the trust first started talking about testing water in the schools and of course also uh, daycare centers, it was very critically important to me as a mom, as um, hopefully a grandmother someday, and um, having observed what went on in Flint, Michigan, which really highlighted just how serious water issues can be. Uh, I often speak with people um, who don't think about the pipes under the ground. Uh, I talk about the water infrastructure in our state and the critical need to be replacing pipes and to be taking proactive response to what we can do to ensure that every child has healthy water. Not every adult has healthy water, but every child has healthy water. What you all have done here in Reading is extraordinary. And what we're working on together is utilizing resources that we have in the state too, to hopefully, while communities are transitioning, providing water filling stations so that kids can have access to clean water even before we complete everything that we're doing. The funds that you are giving us here today will allow us to ex even expand the program further and one of the reminders, because I'm a fast learner and Marty made sure I knew this early on, is it's not just about lead, it's about copper too. And in 31% of the schools that we've already tested, copper is an issue. 63 or 4% lead was an issue. And then with the new standard, which I support fully, because to me, any lead or copper in the water, forget it, we don't want it. 
Um, we want to be able to test for all of them, be able to do what Reading has accomplished, which is really a model that should not only be used in our state, but should be used nationally. And I congratulate you and your entire team on this. And so we need to move forward and attack these things. It's complete collaboration. And that's what's great about today. Uh, we have a mem you know, members, but we have a an extraordinary member of the legislature here, and your colleague Joan Lovely and um, Larry Ehrlich, the state representative, who are also very involved in all this. And we have different parts of state government. We have different parts of federal government. We, I, of course, am the big MWRA person. We know that. Having had my high school colleague has been on that board for how many years? Head of DPW in my community. He got a call from me last week because my water tasted funny. <laughs> I also smell that. That's why you called. <laughs> yes, that is why you called. So um, I just want to thank you all. And uh, onward and upward together. Again, thank you for having me. Thank you, Treasurer Goldberg. It's my pleasure to introduce Mass DEP, DEP Commissioner Marty Suber. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I want to offer my own thanks to the town of Reading, Mr. Manager, School Superintendent Eric for that great tour, Senator. Uh, thank you all for welcoming us to your community. Thank you for the work you've done on, on this important water quality issue. Um, the tour that Eric provided, uh, a lot of the work that they did early on in the process, um, it, it so resonates with us because as, uh, as the town manager noted and as Eric noted in his presentation, there's a whole lot of elements of this. There are a whole lot of facets related to dealing with lead and water. The testing, the reporting, the responding, the communicating, making sure there's an agenda for moving forward. So uh, I really commend your, your important efforts on that. And Dennis, um, thank you so much to EPA uh, for this grant. Um, we're getting a big check within your first month. Is this gonna be a regular thing? <laughs> a, monthly a monthly check? Okay, I like it. this is good. Right, right. Yeah, right, yeah, we'll give you our bank account. But, uh, but no, uh, seriously, uh, last year when uh, we knew that uh, the eligibility was out, the applications were out, um, our governor, who has taken a personal interest in, in lead and drinking water and lead in schools, um, was quick to uh, let EPA know that we were interested in, in, in pursuing this funding and, and uh, asked us to work quickly to make sure we had an application that, that hopefully would result in a successful award, and we're very glad to be getting that funding today. Uh, the treasurer really uh, talked about an important concept, and, and I really can't say it a lot better. I'll, I'll just touch on it briefly. But the idea of partnership, the idea that we are all in this together when we're working on this. Um, the treasurer, like our governor, had a, a concern that we were not getting to schools that we needed to get to. And so the trust um, in, in 2016 made the first uh, funding available. And from there we designed a program and it was really a new program. I, you know, we use the term nation leading sometimes. In this case, it really was a nation leading program to not only uh, to test, but really help schools do the work of testing and to provide technical help. We know schools are busy with lots of things other than water quality, and that's only one of the issues. And for us at DEP, when we're talking about parts per billion and sealed canisters going to labs and reporting on EDEP, that might not mean the same thing to people that it means uh, to us. And so we spent a lot of time making sure that we were being user-friendly in this effort. And that first round of funding resulted in us getting to over a thousand schools, uh, I believe we did over 65,000 tests 
And again, those schools receive technical help um, with our UMass partners in terms of making sure that we were uh, addressing things together, properly communicating with the public that cares deeply about this issue, and talking about how we move forward. And so the funding we get today is funding that we're going to be able to use to build on this program again. We are delighted with this funding because it allows us to move uh, forward with another round of testing, to get to daycares, to get to schools, to make sure that our most vulnerable populations uh, the water that we are testing in those facilities, uh, we have the resources to address it. And as the treasurer indicated, it is an ongoing discussion when we're on, at, working together on the Clean Water Trust. What's the next step? What are the next things we can do to help uh, schools and, and uh, other facilities deal with this issue? So it's ongoing work, but this is an important, uh, an important point. We're expecting that in the fall, we will be now able to reopen uh, an application process so schools that haven't been able to take advantage uh, of our program will be able to and that from there uh, it, starting in the new year we'll see samples. When we talk about partnership we also have to talk about MWRA. When we started this program one of the things that MWRA did early was to say that for uh, schools in our communities we will do the testing, we'll do the analysis. What a tremendous leverage of resources that was. We were able to make dollars go further we were able to get to more schools because of the, uh, the immediate proactive commitment of MWRA. So, Fred Lasky, thank you very much. Um, the last thing I'd like to say is this program, um, I do have to also acknowledge um, you know, a, lot of, a lot of folks at DEP because this was a new program. And, and it was um, it's kind of interesting to design a program, get it up and running and, and, um, in, a, in a short period of time. And I really want to acknowledge people that worked on it. We have some of them here today. Uh, Mark LaPlante from our uh, regional office. Eric Oral, our regional director. Beth Carr, DEP alumnus and now MWRA star. Stephanie Cooper. And of course, Yvette DePisa, who's the head of our drinking water program. Um, Ed Coletta, our, our, public, uh, our public affairs director, because these types of uh, programs uh, generate uh, appropriate levels of interest, and they've all, they've all worked hard on it, and now with this 900,000, I'm gonna say now it's time to get back to work. We're doing the next round. So once again, thank you very much to EPA. Thank you very much to Reading. Thank you very much to all of our partners. We look forward to working together and getting even more work done on this very important issue. Commissioner, I was reminded a little while ago that over 10 years ago I stood in this position in this room in front of town meeting and cautioned 192 of my fellow residents that the MWRA would probably increase rates by eight, 7, 8, or 9 percent annually while we decided whether to rebuild the water treatment plant or join the MWRA. I'm very pleased to see that uh, Fred and his team have made a fool of me annually since then. <laughs> I'm very happy to introduce the executive director of the MWRA, Fred Lasky. That was quite a night. And by the way, I think it was probably one of the last events held in the old auditorium because literally the, the wrecking ball was outside and a lot of the stuff had been stripped off and uh, it was ready to go. And, and I do have to say that it was government working as government should work. We read all the chaos that's going on and and it was a civil discussion, it was an intelligent discussion. Uh, the, you know, it was just, a, it was grinding, to be honest, but we did it. And the result is, one of the things we did, we did sell, uh, promote, is the partnership. So we have a, a, a great bunch of professionals who work with the authority, and, and uh, they would be there to help in partnership if there was an issue. So I think that those chickens uh, came home to roost in a positive way. And by the way, we haven't had a dry day in the Ipswich River here in Reading since, right? It's once we shut those balls off. So thank you, Bob. Marty, I, I just thank you. I, I have to say that it was great teamwork I've been working together. You think about it between your testing and our testing, we did over 100,000 tests in over um, 1,000 schools. And a great cooperation. I thank my staff at, at MVRA for ramping up so quickly and, and hiring the, the, the staff and the emergency procurements to get the equipment. And it really, it really worked well. Uh, treasurer Goldberg, um, the treasurer has realized 
in many, many forms, that she has incredible clout with the massive finances that she manages, and that she has the ability to mold public policy and to address public issues by using the sheer might of the dollars, the billions of dollars that she manages. And I think this is a great example of one of those initiatives where from day one, she hopped in and said, hey, let us use our might to help out and get this problem solved. And I thank you for that. And the communities around, the, the kids around the state owe you a great debt of gratitude for the wonderful job you're doing there. As far as the lead and copper rule that, that has been laid out to us yesterday, um, several words come to mind. Uh, one is it's a thoughtful proposal. It's very clear that a lot of smart people spent a lot of time working on this proposal. And it is thoughtful and it's comprehensive. As the commissioner said, there are many, many, many angles to this lead and copper uh, issue. And it seems as if, from what we've seen, and Jane gave a great briefing yesterday, um, that they have, they have brought all of those different pieces together uh, in, a, in a proposal that's layered and thoughtful and, and uh, is, is going to work uh, to help this situation. It's a bold proposal. I have no doubt about it. This, this, the folks who wrote this were pushing the edge. Uh, there, there's a, a, a certain amount of moxie that went into this, and it's, a, it, it's important that they be bold. We need bold in this situation. And then finally, it's aggressive. This is a sea change. This is a wake-up call to water utilities around the country that the Environmental Protection Agency is not fooling around. That you're going to take a leadership role, as you have, but you're going to take a leadership role and you're going to drive this across the country. Because have no doubt about it, lead and children is a horrible combination. It, it, it's permanent damage, it, the empirical data is irrefutable that lead and water, and, and lead from anywhere, including paint chips and other sources, um, are it's just a horrible, horrible, uh, preventable situation. And I think the combination of what we've seen here today between the, the commissioner, the treasurer, regional administrator here today, it bodes well for the children of Massachusetts. They, they can take comfort knowing that their appointed and their elected officials are working hard. And frankly, as, as the commissioner said, we are in a leadership role here in Massachusetts and the country, being ahead of the curve, not waiting for it to hit the fan. We're there, you're there, as, as a team out there pushing this to make sure that we eliminate lead poisoning in kids across this Commonwealth. So thank you all. Lastly, thank you, Fred. Lastly, I'd like to introduce uh, Superintendent of Schools, John Doherty. Thank you, Bob. State Treasurer Goldberg, Senator Lewis, Executive Director Lasky, EPA Administrator Diesel, Commissioner Suberg, federal, state, and local leaders, and other distinguished guests and employees of the Town of Reading and Reading Public Schools. We are honored to be one of the four sites in the country to be hosting today's press conference by the EPA. One of our most important charges as educators and public employees is the health, safety, and well-being of our children. Over the last several years, our school district has worked collaboratively with our town government, our Department of Public Works, our facilities department, police and fire to ensure the safest possible learning environment for our students. Several years ago, and Bob mentioned it earlier, in collaboration with the Water Department and Facilities Department, we put together an aggressive lead and copper water testing and mitigation program, which has become a model throughout our region. This program is an interdepartmental effort based on full transparency, timely communication, and immediate response. I would like to publicly thank many people who did the work to make this happen. Water Quality and DPW Safety Administrator, Eric Misligli, Director of Facilities, Joe Huggins, Assistant Director of Facilities, Kevin Kabusi, and Chief Financial Officer, Gail Dow, for all the time and effort and dedication they put into this important program. They're the ones that did the real work. I'd also like to thank our Town Manager, Bob Aldershore, and I'd also like to thank our DPW Director, Jane Kinsella, for their efforts and leadership in working collaboratively with our schools to ensure a safe environment for our students. 
It is our ultimate goal to completely eliminate lead and copper in our school drinking water, and it sounds like today that's everyone's goal. And with our team and the process that we have in place in Reading, we believe that we will be able to achieve that goal. So thank you again for this opportunity to showcase the good things that are going on in our community and providing a safe environment for our children. Thank you.